hey, how's it going? Well, there's someone I had to block on Twitter recently, past few days, whom I've had conversations with for, for a couple years at least, but he gets so nasty every time I question his full-fledged socialist ideology. You know, he believes in the full-fledged social ownership of the means of production, and, and I don't agree with that. I argue that competition breeds innovation. And he tries to argue, oh, well, the only kind of innovation that uh, competition breeds is colorful garbage. And I'd bring up examples like uh, the Yugo, and uh, there's a few other examples I can't think of right now, of, you know, what happens when people aren't enticed to... uh, to be innovative. You know, if if people have no reason to be innovative, they're not going to be. That's just how that works, you know? Now, I believe in a, uh, in a maximum wage law. I don't think CEOs should be able to make, you know, 500 times the, the pay of the people below them. You know, I, I believe in really serious regulations, but I don't believe in full-fledged social ownership of the means of production except for things like uh, health care and roads and and uh, police and fire department and uh, a lot of our infrastructure and utilities and you know there's a number of things I, I I'm fine with that that's that's fine those things I think should be socialized but not businesses like you know car makers cell phone make you know smartphone makers um, luxury goods, I don't believe in the social ownership of those things. Otherwise, you're not going to. There's not going to be much innovation. I just, I just, I just don't buy into this notion that oh, they'll they'll remain innovative. No, they they won't. But uh, yeah, when I was starting to question, uh, you know, his the, the whole social ownership of the means of production, he started calling me a pedo, and I don't I don't put up with that shit. You know, I had reasonable arguments. And what's funny is, you know, when I try to, when I would try to to argue for regulated capitalism, he would, would try to tell. Well, if you can't tell me, uh, what what is what did how did he word it? Um, if you can't tell me the exact way that you that you would implement this sort of thing, then you don't have an argument. You know, if you don't have an an exact plan that you can say one step each step. Uh, procedurally, then you don't have an an argument. I mean, that's not how that works. Anyway, so I blocked him after he started calling me a pedo. I'm just not going to put up with that. He becomes really, really nasty when anyone questions his his socialist ideology. You know, I'm all right with democratic socialism, but full-fledged socialism, no. Anyway... Robert Wallace made an awesome video about political philosophy and uh, made a number of analogies uh, based off of a lot of people's different work, and it was very cool. He's, he's much... He... I am not good at describing... Uh, I mean, I understand a lot of philosophical views, but I'm not very good at articulating them and he's really good at that he's he he could probably make a job out of that he, he would he's very good at it anyway and he was talking about how you know if you if total stagnation you know equals death to some degree you know you, you can't be just completely stagnant and you can't go f- from you know totally on one side or totally on the other because if you go to you know let's let's slay strings on a guitar if or a violin if the strings are too loose they won't play and if the strings are too tight the strings break so you know you've got to be there's got to be somewhere in the middle but you've also got to experiment a little bit so you don't just stagnate and i think that was that was a very good message there's a number of other good things that he said in his video and i'll leave a link to it in the description bar i i it was very insightful really appreciated him making that um I judge myself way too much 
on how I move around politically. Um, you know, if you if you watch my videos over a period of time, you can see that yeah, I move I move, move to the right, I move to the left, and it just I, I continue to move around. You know, I find new information, I I question my views, and so I move around. And uh, one of the things that makes me not able to completely connect with the left is some just how extreme identity politics and intersectionality and a lot of the other shit that you hear being uh, promoted at colleges and uh, on parts of social media and uh, some things that are making their way into HR departments and stuff like that. I, yeah, I, I, I don't support those things. Um, I mean, a little bit of identity politics isn't bad. Some mild identity politics isn't bad. It, some of that's kind of necessary to, to move forward. But the, the degree that other people take it, you know, and, and the progressive stack and the, the whole works, it's just, and it's, it's too much. It's just, it's madness. I can't support that. And that's what usually keeps me from going too far to the left. And what keeps me going too, too far to the right is uh, people's belief that uh, we should all have one... We should all strive to be one culture. We should all strive to live one way. We should promote one way of life. You know? Let's promote the... the uh, the the nuclear family at all costs. It's just like no, I I you know I sh we shouldn't degrade people for wanting a nuclear family, but we shouldn't push that as the as the only viable option either. You know, um, so the extremes you know keep me from clinging to completely permanently clinging to one side or the other, but. Still, the fact that I move around, I, I've been criticized quite a bit in the past on my YouTube channel for moving around. And I, I shouldn't judge myself on that. I shouldn't let people's judgment on me for, for moving around get to me. I just shouldn't let that happen. You know, it's, I, it's a good thing that I move around because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to stagnate. I guess that's all I've really got to say. Thanks for watching.